Welcome back, bad movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where first is the worst. I'm your host, Matt Presents. I talk about bad movies, and I am joined, as always, by my wonderful co-host. Hello, my name is Mackle, but my friends like to call me Dibshit. Well, some people like to call you McCall Shadakal. Yes, that's... Or, uh... How did Richie pronounce it? I don't remember, actually. We were just listening to it last <laughs> night. Uh, uh, we got a good one today, folks. It's uh, Eastern-inspired cartoons getting adapted into shitty live-action movies. Uh, one from 2009 and one from 2010, so just a year apart. It's Last Airbender versus Dragon Ball Evolution. Is, Last Airbend- um, is Avatar The Last Airbender Eastern? Eastern inspired. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I the inspired is the important word there. Mm-hmm. I do obviously. Uh, Dragon Ball is an anime, and Avatar is not. It's Western animation, but I think these movies have more in common than they have separating themselves. Yeah, I, I, I think, think they are. This pair up still makes sense. Spiritually similar. Yeah, like. If you're going to talk about one, you might talk about the other. Mm-hmm. I think it's a good matchup. Um, I think we should say, right before we dive into Last Airbender, um, spoilers for Avatar The Last Airbender Season 1. Yeah. Um, we have been spoiling these movies, but I don't know that that really matters much. It does but not matter sp- for, like, for the TV shows yet. Yeah, if you don't want to, if you want to watch the Avatar The Last Airbender, you should do that. Uh, yes, please, please watch Avatar Season 1 before listening on, because we we have to talk about some stuff at the end of the season. We have to talk some spoilers. Yeah, and Dragon Ball, it does not matter at fucking all. No, uh, we, we will not be spoiling Dragon Ball in any significant way. Yeah. Uh, Maybe so mention last... of, like, something in the first few episodes, but nothing big. Last Airbender is a film brought to us by the legendary M. Night Shyamalan, um, and covers the plot of season one of Avatar The Last Airbender. I think most people know the general idea of Avatar, even if they don't, even if they haven't seen the show, they know, you know, people can bend the four elements, but only the Avatar can master all four. Aang is an airbender, but he's frozen in ice for a hundred years, and when he's thawed out, all of the other airbenders have been killed off, and the Fire Nation has sort of taken over, not the whole world, but uh, most of the four nations, right? So it's up to Aang to sort of master the elements and defeat the Fire Nation. Something he doesn't actually do in this movie because it's only based on book one, but yeah. Yeah. Well, the sequels are coming. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, they, they're, they were talking about sequels, but... Mm, obviously, that didn't happen. Yeah, no. It, it'll come out the same day the Super Mario Brothers sequel comes out. <laughs> Fucking... How, okay, how far are you into the show now? I know that you... like. I, I've seen the whole show. How far are you in? I'm, I think, four episodes into season two. All right, so you you, you got the first season down, though. You you can definitely I, yes, comment I made, on the I made, two. I made sure to watch all of season one before I watched the movie. Although, I watched this movie, like, years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's so fucking boring that it di- I, I remembered none of it. It didn't spoil anything about the show for me because I just completely forgot about anything that happened in the movie. Just to address a bias going into this episode, although I don't really think anyone's going to take issue with me, Bad Mouth and The Last Airbender, I don't think it has a single fan. Maybe Shyamalan likes it. Um, I uh, Avatar The Last Airbender is like one of my favorite shows of all time. It's probably... Probably top five, definitely top ten. Dragon Ball doesn't mean anything to me. Um, so I will say that I got ain't much, much angrier <laughs> watching The Last Airbender. But I I wanted to just acknowledge that bias because someone who's a big Dragon Ball fan might uh, 
might have stronger feelings on that. Mm-hmm. Well, what'd you think of the movie, Michael? Oh, man. I, I, I fucking, hate, <laughs> fucking hated it. I thought I would. I really did. Our friend Mitzi literally joined the call, did not watch the movie with us, but just wanted to hear me bitch about it specifically. <laughs> so that's why they joined us. It was, yeah, it was painful. I mean, it was really, really I, fucking painful. So the first time I watched the movie, I hadn't actually seen Avatar. So mostly I was just bored by it. And then I'm like, okay, well, now that I've seen the show, I like the show. Maybe, maybe I'll be a little more upset this time. But nah, I, I just, it's, it's just boring. It's just boring. It does frustrate me to see someone really miss the point of why a scene was done or the significance of it. And I talked about that a lot when we're watching it. And here's the thing. One thing I actually think this movie does fairly well is picking the episodes to take from. Because, you know, it's a 20 episode season. You cannot do all 20 episodes but, you know, they do the episode in the Atlantic, but like where Sok and Katara, you have to do that one, of course. Then they do the Air Temple. Mm -hmm. I would say that one's crucial. They do the one where Zuko goes in with like the costume on and saves Aang. That, I think that one's crucial. You know, they have the four part finale um, in the Ice Kingdom or whatever. <laughs> what, what's it called again? Yeah, but like water, like the half the movie. The, the Northern Ice Kingdom. Yes, yes. Or Northern Water Kingdom, whichever. Might be the Water Kingdom. I don't remember. Like, half the movie is the last four episodes. Yeah. Which, granted, you know, it is a four-part story. You, you kind of... That's, that's going to be one of the essential ones. But it's, yeah. it's half the movie. Like, we, I was watching it, and I'm like, wait, we're already here? One thing that I said, I was like preaching a lot though when watching this movie, um, is the fucking like just again like I I think they picked the right things, but one it's completely emotionless. No one sounds invested in the character. It's like you don't really feel like you're watching characters at all in this. <laughs> Nothing has any sort of lasting impact on you. The characters are less engaged than Marmaduke characters. It's it's really bad. <laughs> Um, but I also feel like he missed, like Shyamalan missed the point of certain episodes. And one that I talked about a lot was the Air Temple episode. Cause to my understanding, Aang was in the original show was already told that like, like a hundred like years has passed and that pretty much everyone in the Air Temple would be gone at this point. And as a kid, he isn't really processing that. He's not really accepting that. So he goes in really excited and then slowly reality just kind of sinks in. And it leads into a really devastating moment for him. In the movie, it's just like, yeah, they just didn't fucking tell him. <laughs> they just didn't tell him that a hundred years passed and, th and then they go. And I thought that was really bad. <laughs> I thought that was just, again, just kind of missing, missing the point there entirely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, although... If we're going to talk about missing the point, <laughs> we have to talk about the Earthbender prison. Oh my god. <laughs> you didn't even need to so, do that one, by the way. That's not one of the episodes you needed to adapt. <laughs> I I kind of get why they did it. I Because it's like, oh, you know, Aang is going to like, or excuse me, Ong is going to yeah, uh, inspire the people to rise up against the Fire Nation. It's hard to end the show. So I, I get that, you know, they're, they're, he's <laughs> inspiring people to rise up against the Fire Nation. That's a good thing to have in there. But in the show, the Airbender, or excuse me, the Earthbenders are all imprisoned on a boat. So there's no earth to bend. Yeah. Fucking duh. In this movie, they are imprisoned on a mountainside <laughs> surrounded by earth. <laughs> it's, it makes it's no like sense. building a prison out of live AK-47s, right? Yeah. Fully loaded AK-47s. You can't do that. You can't do that. 
<laughs> and all of the guards are armed with like a pocket knife. <laughs> it, it, it's yeah, it doesn't work at all. It doesn't work at all. And it's like, I, I that's a really good episode. I, I kind of understand what you're saying too, if it given like Aang this big moment, but one, you know, and again, it's an adaptation. You can switch some things around, but Katara is actually the one who gives the speech in that episode, but yeah. that episode also gives them the opportunity to strategize, you know, Katara pretends to be an earthbender. And then when they're on the ship, now they have this advantage of actually having someone who can use their bending abilities because they're surrounded by water. Yeah. And I mean, I, I get why they would cut a lot of that, but yeah. I, Oh yeah. That's I, I, I like, that's why I think you should just not put that one in there at all. But I mean, you, you kind of just shouldn't have made the movie at all. Really, that's true. <laughs> like, like, what what advantage is a movie gonna have over the the show that already exists? Yeah, it, it's not gonna. It, you know, like I hear there's apparently like another live action version of the show coming out, and the creator, the show's creators, have something to do with it. I don't really think there's much room for improvement with Avatar. There's, like, a couple of filler episodes in season one I don't like that much, but that's such a small thing to improve, you know? Like, the main story itself, and I know that you're still pretty early in, I don't think that there's much room to improve it. I, I, if you want to do a completely different story like Korra, that's cool. I don't know why you want to retell this yeah. first story when it's already fine the way it is. <laughs> Yeah, I, w I would take, like, an Avatar spinoff story over just a flat retelling of it. <laughs> yeah. The Death Note movie, I, I it, it's that one's especially a weird case, just because it's like, they kind of go half and half. Like, why not just ha give the Death Note to a different character? It's just, oh, this is what would happen if this person had it. You don't have to, don't, don't try to retell something in a, such a short period of time. <laughs> uh, it, I don't, I don't think that works. Yeah, no. Um, give given you know just to give some, some credit, I don't know who could make that work with Avatar. I like take twenty episodes and merge yeah. it into a movie. But I do think I, I do think someone could easily do better than Shyamalan because there's minor like little details that are just like there's so many fucking absolutely. things wrong with it. That's the thing. I don't think you could make a good Avatar movie, but also like. This is still a really bad Avatar movie. Yeah. Um, we should probably address Shyamalan. Yeah. Because it took us three episodes to get to a Shyamalan movie. What do you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I said this to you, but I think this is his least Shyamalan-y movie. This is, this is the movie where his voice comes through the least... Yeah, but the shitty acting of a Shyamalan movie is in there. Yeah. There's such bad performances, it's so lifeless. <laughs> um Yeah, I mean Okay, this this might be a bit of a spicy take. I think season one of Avatar the Last Airbender is largely driven by the characters and their personalities and their story arcs and all that. And I, cause I, I don't think the main plot of season one is all that interesting. Most episodes you can figure out where they're going in the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're there for the characters, right? You're not there for the stories. You're there for the characters. And I think as evidence of that, you have this movie where none of them are characters. They mm -hmm. have no personality, they have no arc, they have no development. I agree, um, because, like, and here's the thing, like, uh, I, I remember you even told me this ahead of time, I think I understand where you're coming from better with this now. Season one does feel like it's there for the characters, while season two and three, it's like, all right, you know, let's do a bigger story now. Like, season one's kind of hinting yeah. at that bigger story to come, and then season two, there's, like, this insane finale but and they're also like in a single location for a really long period of time um and then the third season there's all this strategizing and battle like planning out these fights and it's it's really it's really interesting to watch I, I won't say too much but it does definitely build on it definitely becomes something bigger well season one yeah it's it's mainly episode it's mainly episodic stuff 
with a now, like with some like conti- with obvious continuity, but now what I'm gonna say, just having having not seen much of season two and having not started season three, do you think you could adapt those into one movie, or are they gonna have to break those up into several movies? Because season one, there's not that much plot, so you can cram it into an hour and 40 minute movie. You shouldn't, but you can. I, I don't know that you could do that with the other two seasons. Um, you need, uh, for, I don't, I don't know. Season three would probably, <sighs> shit. Season three might make it into a two, like two parts might make sense, although maybe not. I could definitely, I could definitely tell you where part one and part two would begin for like season three. The se- second season, if you skip like a good chunk of the stuff that happens at the beginning of the season, aside from introducing Toph, um, there is a point. And I'm trying not to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything for you. Um, there is a point where I could kind of see them start in the movie. Or getting into like the real plot of the second movie, where you could actually fit it all into a single film. You'd have to cut a lot out, but like basically, like a, a big chunk of season two, like I said before, takes place in one setting, and they could do that. There's like some side stories they could cut out of season two that wouldn't be needed for the movie that are great in the show, but wouldn't be needed for the movie. Like there's a big plot line involving uh, Appa in season two, and you probably would want that out of the movie. Just because a movie can only be so long, <laughs> but yeah. it's really, but it's really good in the show. No, no disrespect. No, no I, disrespect to Appa. Moral of the story: Avatar works better as a show. Yeah. Oh, you were talking about Shyamalan before. Uh, I, I think we didn't get to say enough about Shyamalan. I feel. How many good movies do you think he has? Two. I'd give him three. I, I'd say. I, hmm. Unbreakable. Okay, I'll, Sixth Sense. I like Split. I'll say I'll say two great movies and one good movie. Mm-hmm. One like decent movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Split's not as good as the other two, but I do think it's good. I I, I never I couldn't get through Signs because I just thought it was boring. Um, yeah, I wasn't super into Signs either. Glass made me sad because <laughs> uh, I really love Unbreakable. It's my favorite Shyamalan movie. It's one of my favorite movies, period. Yeah. Uh, the Visit, I hated it, and everybody I watched it with really loved it, and I don't understand why. <laughs> but I guess to, to each their own, if you like The Visit, that's fine, but oh my god. <laughs> I, I, I hated I, I, it. I really didn't have any strong opinions either way. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, that was better than a lot of the other stuff Shyamalan's made, but not good. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is the worst one. This is the worst one I've seen from him. I know you said After um, Earth might be worse. I haven't seen it. No, I, I do think this is his worst movie. Having seen all of his movies, except Old. Old just came out when we're recording this, but I haven't seen Old yet. But of, of all of his other movies, this is the worst. Like, After yeah. Earth is the only one that's even close. Let me uh, play devil's advocate for a moment and say things about this movie that didn't suck. Uh, mainly the sets. I thought the sets looked pretty all right. Occasionally you yeah, get a okay. Occasionally you'd get a shot that doesn't look like complete shit. Although that's completely like it's easy to forget that when most of the shots look really bad. Like that entire sequence of Ng or Ong talking to Katara and how how are they mispronouncing Katara and Sokka in that movie again? Katara, they got right. Sokka, they call Soka. Soka. Uh, <laughs> come on. You didn't watch the show. If you're calling them that, you didn't watch the show. <laughs> Shyamalan. Yeah. That's a really easy yes. mistake to avoid. <laughs> um, yeah, there there are some really awkward, like, way too close close-ups in this yeah. movie. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's just... It's really bad, but the, I get like the sets, like you know that you you see like the inside of one of the Fire yeah, Nation no. ships, and it's just like, yeah, you know what? If this was a movie made by a better person, this the set could stay. The set could stay. The air yeah, temple I mean, looked pretty good. 
it looked like the show. Yeah. That's the thing. It, I, I thought it was... The, the sets are very good. They they resemble the show. The effects were on and off. There were times where I thought it looked like some of the effects actually looked pretty nice, and then there were times where I was like, oh, this looks really bad. <laughs> it depended. Um, like, Appa... Appa looked very off. It, it's mainly the way that they did the fucking feet, I think. Um... Momo looked off, so like the CG creatures weren't like it wasn't the, it wasn't the worst, but it they weren't amazing looking in my opinion. And then the effects, it's just like yeah, there was times where there's like a, there's like some some shots where it's just like Aang doing a jump and he uses wind to break his fall, and most of the time it's done fairly well. It's like subtle enough. It's just like yeah, it's a character using his abilities in a subtle way. Like I'm I, I like it, and then some of like the fight like the big action scenes though. I don't know. It's there's never a point where the effects are like fucking terrible, but I could definitely could definitely give them props for some of the scenes with that. Um I want to talk about Princess Oh shit, what's her name? Princess Yue? Princess Yeah. Yume? Is is there an M Yue? in there or not? Yue? Is it Yui? Uh shit. They're going to call me a the fake prince. fan. <laughs> the princess. Yeah. Um, there is no screen time dedicated to her and Sokka's relationship in this movie, which is a huge thing in the show. The number one thing that people who watch the movie focus on with that character is that the back of her hair looks like a dick. It does look like a dick. Yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> that's how. That's the uh, impression that she has left. <laughs> and she yeah, is. And she like, is a very important character in the show. Yeah, and and at the this is where we're spoiling season one, right? Yeah. She sacrifices herself at the end of season one to like restore balance, and in the show, it's this big moment. Both because, you know, she's, like, a character you've grown to like, and she's sacrificing herself, but there's also a level of sacrifice on Sokka's part, because he's yeah. developed this relationship with her. And he just doesn't have that relationship with her in this movie. I don't think she, yeah. he speaks two words to her until, like, she's about to make the sacrifice, and then he's like, Ah, oh, so, I was supposed to protect you. And it's like, since fucking when? You were supposed no, to protect Katara, her in the show. In the Katara show. Katara talked her, about it. <laughs> in the show, her father told him, like, hey, I want you to protect my daughter. And it's like, okay, when he says that line in the show, it makes sense. It makes no sense in the movie. Yeah. It doesn't work. That's... That's one of the things they cut that they needed to leave in. That's the thing. As far as adaptational changes, really the only big one is the Earthbender prison. Yeah. The problem is just the stuff they left out. They left out all the wrong things. Yeah, the pacing is... Like, it's also... Even even then... I know I've said this before. It's just... It looks all right in certain scenes. There's, like I said, like some nice sets, some nice effects, occasionally a nice shot, but it's just still so void of personality. Yes. Because the pacing is off the entire time. Big plot details are just left to a narration from Katara. Yes, Katara in the show did a narration at some point, mainly in the intro, but it, you know, I, <laughs> this movie's like overusing it. That's how yes. half of the information is given to you. Um, yes, show don't tell, thanks. And the characters, it's like, Zuko and Uncle Ira are almost giving you something. It doesn't, it's not good, but they clearly, I think those two are better than anyone else. There's a little bit of personality there. There's like, their delivery is a bit more interesting than any of the other characters. It sounds like there might be a person inside there somewhere. Though Ira looks nothing like their version of Ira looks nothing yeah, like the character no. at all. It's not not even <laughs> remotely looks correct. Wrong. Um, um, he doesn't look old enough to be Iro. Honestly, mm -hmm. he looks about 
15 years too young to be Iroh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Those characters almost have a personality, but they never quite make it to where the characters are in the show. So it's like, yeah. even there, they're failing. They're and, just failing less. And I also have to mention, this This is both a factor in the first season, I believe, and later on in the show, but Uncle Ira being in poor shape is kind of a plot point. <laughs> and this movie just doesn't have him in bad shape. Like the I'm pretty sure the entire show was out when the first movie was made. Shyamalan should have probably known that. I guess maybe he was going to go in a different direction with it, but... Like there's a there's like actual purpose for Ira being in the shape he is in, and this guy, yeah, he doesn't have the belly at all. He he looks perfectly healthy. <laughs> it doesn't work. I yeah. I feel like I'm uh, all over the place with this one. It's just like yeah, there's very little for me to compliment. Yeah, uh, it's um, well something I was gonna say, and we probably should have said it when we were talking about uh, Saka and Yue is. Like, like, after he said that, after she sacrificed herself, I, I turned to the mic and I said to you, you could cut Sokka from this movie and nothing would change. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. fucking <laughs> There is, there is no reason for Sokka or S Suka, <laughs> Soka, however they pronounced it. So there is no reason for him this. to be in this movie. And he's, he's, he's like, such an essential character to the show, but, like, he does nothing in the movie. I think he's the worst one in this movie, honestly. <laughs> and there's, like, it's not like the other, like, it's not like uh, Ong and Katara are good. But I think he is worse. I think he is the worst one. And I think it's because there's so much of a fucking contrast with Sokka. Because he's kind of this comic relief character. But he also is a character of, like, sincere heart. I mentioned this before. One of the things that made me really like him in the first episode, even though he's kind of being a dickhead in the first episode, is when it comes time to protect his town, he jumps up on that wall by himself, ready to go. And it's like, yeah, that's stupid. He's not going to win. But there is something admirable about that. You you kind of, like, see that this character is not just talking. He, he isn't just running his mouth. He actually will follow through on the things he's talking about. Um, and yeah, in this one, that, that doesn't happen at all. <laughs> Sokka just stands there. He doesn't do shit. Yeah. Yeah. Sokka is utterly useless. It feels like occasionally they're trying to make him the comic relief character in the movie because they'll have like him get hurt by like Appa's tail or something like that. Um, or like Katara, like, or he gets like frozen by accident. It's, but it's just like, it's so, it's delivered so fucking awkwardly. It's like, I am supposed to be funny now. Look at me. I am being funny now. This movie isn't funny. There's nothing remotely comedic about this movie. <laughs> Do you remember that fucking season four opener of BoJack where it's like showing how Mr. <laughs> Peanut Butter got on his sitcom and it's showing that like, I forget who the actor they're making fun of is, but it's shown that really uncharismatic guy as like the person who was supposed to be on Mr. Peanut Butter sitcom. That's what Sokka feels like. Oh, uh, I, uh, I, I feel sorry for the kid who played Aang or Ong. I feel sorry for all of them. I don't like, I don't even know if Cause it's, it's a Shyamalan movie. I don't even know if I can blame them. This was like his debut and it kind of killed his career. Yeah. He, he was only in like two or three movies after this. And it's like, you can't blame this on him. None of the actors are good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... I, I don't think he got a fair shake. You know? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, like, fucking Shyamalan has turned good actors bad. Um, There are talented actors who have done a shitty job in a Shyamalan movie. Mark Wahlberg isn't, like, a fucking... In my opinion, he's not, like, a fucking amazing actor or anything, but he can... There's some movies where he's really, like, you know, pretty good. You know, like, your Boogie Nights or uh, the, part, the Departed, he's good in that. But, yeah, like, yeah. he's, like, fucking horrible in The Happening, so much so that it's, like, <laughs> memed on. Um, I think I Shyamalan just has the effect on them. I don't, like... I don't blame Shyamalan for Bruce Willis and Glass, but I blame Shyamalan for a lot of the bad performances in his movies. I just think he's a he's just a bad director. 
I respect the guy to some extent just because he doesn't like he makes very non-traditional movies and he never let the negative feedback stop him, although he is also really successful. So it's not like it's hurting his wallet to make these movies. But um, yeah, I think I think he got a big head and he hasn't been able to overcome it. Yeah. Apparently Split was an old script, too. So there's that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't like this movie. Anything else to say? Uh, one out of ten. Horrible. <laughs> Sorry, Shyamalan. I hope you make another I, movie that I like again. I really do. I mean... Unbreakable, just, I, easily top 20. I fucking love Unbreakable. I just kind of hope I see movies I like. You know. Yeah. Um... That's why we're watching. That's why we're doing this podcast. Fucking Garfield. That was a. That's the kind of movie that Shyamalan should make. That's. <laughs> oh God, Shyamalan's Garfield. Uh <laughs> be funny. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> There's a twist where he secretly likes Mondays. <laughs> uh. Alright, uh, do you want to introduce Dragon Ball Evolution? Yeah, Dragon Ball Evolution is a movie directed by James Wong that is kind of based off Dragon Ball, even though when Dragon Ball begins, yeah, that's when Goku's a kid, and then when he's older, that's kind of supposed to be Dragon Ball's the other way. I guess he gets older somewhere in the middle of Dragon Ball. But regardless, this movie is about Goku, it's his birthday, and his grandpa is killed uh, by someone who is seeking the six, dra- uh, the seven Dragon Balls, and he teams up with a girl named Bulma, and they go look for a man named uh, Master Roshi. All these are characters on the show, but very different from the characters on the show, and they go seeking out the seven Dragon Balls uh, in order to try to prevent the end of the world, as Piccolo is also gathering the seven Dragon Balls, and if he gains all seven of them, he is going to get his vengeance on the planet Earth and make people suffer. The opening yeah. of this movie is fucking hilarious because I had no <laughs> idea. I had no. I had no idea. I had no idea it was going to cut to him going to high school. That made me laugh so fucking hard. It yeah, no, so this fucking is ridiculous. If, listen, if you have friends who are like fans of Dragon Ball. Don't tell them anything about this movie. Just fucking show it to them. Because it's just... You're completely blindsided by this, like... High school drama? (laughs) In fucking Dragon Ball? (laughs) Uh, It just immediately... Like, it's it's funny because immediately it throws out the show. Because it's like, okay, it opens with Goku... As a teenager, and which already again already goes against the show, and he's doing he's training with his grandpa immediately goes against the show. So I think within like the first five seconds, if you're a Dragon Ball fan, it's like up oh, they fucked it up. But what I will give this movie some credit for over um, Avatar: The Last Airbender or The Last Airbender because a uh, Blue Monkey movie came out um, is that. I prefer, you know, I only watched a little bit of Dragon Ball before this episode. I watched like eight episodes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I definitely learned more familiar that with I, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I'm more familiar with Dragon. I, I watched Dragon Ball Z all the time as a kid, and I watched the Abridged series that Team Four started. I really liked that. But um, I, I mean, I've also liked the show a lot as a kid. I had like toys for it too. I but I never really watched Dragon Ball. Um, I watched the first eight episode of, episodes of Dragon Ball. I think I needed to be a kid to enjoy that, to be honest. Um, but I, I get, I get the, I kind of get the appeal of it. It's, you know, I like the way the yeah. world looks. I like I the think... colors. I like the character designs. It's, you know, as a kid's show, I, I think as a kid, I would have really liked it if I watched it. I don't think you could show the first two episodes to kids. The <laughs> first two episodes are way too pervy for kids. I think the whole show is fucking pervy. <laughs> Which, which, granted, is something the movie improves on. It's yeah. not near as pervy as the show. I yeah, I it's it's weird. I, I don't know. That's a whole other topic. I don't know. I'm because <laughs> it's not just the first. I, I swear to God, all of the episodes were fucking pervy that I watched. <laughs> I don't know. 
It was being... Yeah. I think as a kid, I probably would have laughed at that, though. <laughs> um, regardless, yeah, it's not following the show even remotely. But I, I kind of prefer that to something like Avatar, like like something like The Last Airbender, even like more recently. Uh, the, my least favorite movie of all time is The Lion King live action remake. It's like watching an inferior version of something that you already like beat by beat. And it's yeah. just so frustrating to watch. Whereas this is like so fucking different from the source material where I understand how it's technically a worse adaptation than the last airbender, but it is easier to follow. It's easier to get invested in. And it's just so fucking funny how nothing to do with dragon ball. It is. <laughs> yeah, that's, you could definitely make the argument that, like, you know, Last Airbender is a better adaptation, it's closer to the original, and I would even argue that, like, the the one thing I would give Last Airbender over this is that Last Airbender seems like it was at least intended for the fans. Yeah. Whereas this feels like... They were playing it safe. They were trying to play to as broad an audience as possible. Because you know, you know it was some suit in a boardroom somewhere that was like, Oh, well, we wanted to know if you could make Goku like uh, an outcast high school student. You know, he's not popular and he gets in a fight with the bullies at school. That's what our target demographic likes. Yeah. It's it like... It, it's it's honest to God, it's exactly what fucking Marmaduke did, except it's doing it with a beloved franchise. Because <laughs> nobody, like, really cares about Marmaduke. But... Yeah, this and even is those like, who do, it's pro- they're probably fine with it, because Marmaduke's a one-panel comic. Like, what what, are the, what is there really to adapt with that? So, yeah, whatever. If Dragon Ball, there's a fucking story to adapt. There's no excuse. Yeah, this this almost feels like a parody of, like... A Dragon Ball adaptation, like like The Simpsons or someone would be like, oh, they made a, a movie, ad- a Hollywood adaptation of Dragon Ball, and it's like Goku in high school as yeah. like an awkward kid. <laughs> like, what? that sounds like a joke. That yeah. sounds like the type of thing people joke about when they talk about bad adaptations. It almost felt like at points that it was being self-aware and then it was just so clearly <laughs> not, because there's that really weird fucking scene where Goku is having a daydream about Chi Chi, and she like it just like it the like there's a like it green screens and a meadow behind her, and then she starts eating a fucking strawberry. Like what the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. This movie's. I. The funny stuff is mostly right at the beginning. It does start to drag after a while. Like, once they get into the actual plot of Dragon Ball, <laughs> it starts to drag a little bit. Yeah. It's... But... <sighs> I, 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 the thing is, I was laughing so fucking hard at, like, the first 30 minutes of this. And then it did slow down. It didn't, like, hold up. It didn't maintain that. With fucking Super Mario Brothers, you can literally watch me and Matt react into it on my channel. I was laughing throughout the entire fucking thing. I was having the time of my life watching that movie. Um, This one, it started that way, but it did die down as it went on. I did just start to kind of not enjoy myself. So, as far as, like, adaptational changes, apart from the obvious fact that, like... Okay, hold on, I have to address this. There's there's this trope I kind of hate, where it's like, they, they try to adapt a movie out of, like, some wild fantasy thing, and immediately, like, the plot is, Oh, we're in the magical fantasy world. Oops, we got sent to the real world. Right? They did that in Smurfs, they did that in Master of the Universe, they did that in the Sonic movie. And I hate that. I'm like, just stay in the magical fantasy world. But Dragon Ball Evolution skips that and just sets it in the real world anyway. And it's like, why would you set a Dragon Ball movie in the real world when 
Like, that that misses the point of Dragon Ball so hard. It's like this wild fantasy realm with, like, dragons and, and dinosaurs and shit. The, like, yeah. Yeah. Why would you want to set that in the real world? I guess just because it'd be cheaper, honestly. Like, what budget does this movie have? Yes. Ch- ch- cheaper and safer. Yeah. $30 right? million they, they dollar were... budget. Pe- people aren't smart enough to understand the fantasy world of Dragon Ball. Yeah, I mean, maybe they were just trying to do that because they're just like, it's fucking anime. It's for fucking scrawny little nerds. We got to get cool kids to go see the movie. Um, I don't think it worked. I mean, it, it's box office was fifty eight point two million, so it made, it made its money back. I uh, am going to theorize a little bit that the reason they aged up Goku is because Dragon Ball Z is a lot more popular in America. Yeah. So if they wanted people to think it was like a Dragon Ball Z movie and not based on the original Dragon Ball. Um, because my, my friend has the DVD of this, and his DVD is, it's a Dragon Ball Evolution Z edition. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're really trying to make people think of Dragon Ball Z and not the original Dragon Ball. You know what did bring it back and make it really funny? Um near the end of the movie when Goku like he turned into a monkey then he turned back and his hair was now the Goku hair <laughs> all spiked up <laughs> well, it's, it's spiked up through the whole movie they even have the joke early on where oh. he puts gel in it and then it like pops back up yeah but it's not like the way it looks in that final scene <laughs> yeah that was so um, fucking funny <laughs> That was so fucking ridiculous. This movie looks like a fan film. And here's the thing. It looks like a fan <laughs> film that had uh, a lot of pat. Like, if you watch something on YouTube, if this was something on YouTube, I would watch and say, man, they had a lot of passion in this when they shot these fight scenes and they did these effects. But it looks very amateur. Like, this is something I would, like, this is something that I would respect the hell out of if it was, like, a B movie. If it was, like, an amateur uh, movie. Like, yeah. some some kids in, like, college made it, you know? Um, yeah, I could see that. That makes sense. Because it's not easy to do effects like that. It isn't. But this is like a big, you know, Hollywood production. That, that <laughs> yeah, it had some like yeah. like fairly well known actors in it. You know, it doesn't really. Although I'm not sure if yeah. that's. I mean, it has the two people from Shameless. And I don't think that they had their Shameless fame yet, though. So yeah, this was like two years before Shameless. Yeah. Um, it does have Yun Fat Chow. Yes. An actor I love dearly. Um, and, and he probably fa- is the best part of the movie, actor-wise. Actor-wise, he's also the most accurate part of the movie. Yeah. Because he is Master Roshi. <laughs> he doesn't look like Master Roshi, he, but he does He does behave like Master Roshi. Although I will say yeah, they tone they, the perviness down a bit. Um, well, yeah. You kind of have to. Yeah, he is a pervert, but they it's not like brought up on loop non-stop without them stopping for a minute again i only watched the first eight episodes i'm sure sh- I'm, I'm sure <laughs> if there's any dragon ball fans up there i'm sure he's not only that but but that is what he is in the first few episodes on loop it doesn't stop <laughs> there isn't a point where he isn't acting like that in the anime from what i saw yeah um other adaptational changes. Several major characters aren't in the movie. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have the fucking pig. What the fuck? I I I almost get it with like the weird animal characters. Yeah, Krillin should have been. Krillin's there. not in the movie. Krillin's like one of the most well known characters. I know who he was. And I didn't really like I watched it as a kid. I mean I knew him because of Dragon Ball Z. But I know he's on Dra- I I never made it to the part where he was introduced in Dragon Ball, but I know he's in there. I know yeah, he's a significant he's, part of it. He's just not in the fucking movie. You can make him one of Goku's high school friends. Make him a nerd. Have him, like, wear glasses. <laughs> make All the other kids make just, one of his bald head. Just, just dig the hole even deeper. Just, like, the worst fucking Krillin you could make. 
<laughs> Who cares? We're already in this deep. <laughs> it would be hilarious. Um, you know what would be hilarious? If Krillin was the one character they got, like, spot on. Like, it's an actor. <laughs> they got a shorter person to play Krillin. He's actually bald. He's wearing the Krillin outfit the entire time. He's talking exactly like Krillin. <laughs> <laughs> it... No, they do like a Who Framed Roger Rabbit type thing yeah. and Krillin is still animated. <laughs> like they just bring Krillin in from the anime, but everyone else acts normal. It would be I my act- favorite it would be my favorite adaptation of a TV show ever. <laughs> if that would that would uh, win me. That would win me over. <laughs> uh jeez. He's voiced by Team Four Star Krillin, so he has like the really high voice. Um, Bulma just kind of doesn't do anything. Um, <sighs> Bulma, uh, I, you mentioned something hilarious with Bulma, like their replacement for her blue hair. <laughs> yeah, instead of just giving her blue hair like she has in the anime, they gave her a blue streak in her hair. That was their adaptation of her having blue hair. Yamcha just felt like they wanted to throw in a character. Like, oh, he can be Yamcha. The whole thing with Yamcha is, like, in the show, from what I... Again, I actually I actually did make it to the point where Yamcha was introduced. He's fucking horrified of Bulma because he's, like, really awkward and doesn't know how to talk to girls. That's that's his thing. <laughs> um, yeah. So, in this movie, he's, like, really overly confident and cocky about everything. And it's just, like... Yeah, that's not... You, they weren't even trying to adapt to the character. They were just like, we want this douchey character. And uh, Yam, we, we haven't used Yamcha yet. What if they made him Krillin? It would have made as much sense. <laughs> <laughs> they should have made him the pig character. Yes. I mean, honestly, that he acts more like the pig character. <laughs> I forget um, the pig's name. We should point out the ending of this movie. Um, Goku assembles the seven Dragon Balls, and then instead of wishing for his grandfather back, because his grandfather just got killed like a couple days ago, instead of wishing for like world peace or like end world hunger or anything, he's like, nah, let's bring back Master Roshi. Honestly, though, they say let's go find the Dragon Balls again so they could just go there and, like, make wishes after wishes. The Dragon Ball universe removes consequence. Yeah, but, like... <laughs> they wish that... Why would, you bring, why would you bring back Master Roshi and not your own grandfather? I, I kind of get that in, like, the show that, like, his Goku's grandfather's been dead for a long time mm-hmm. in the show... But in this movie, he gets killed at the beginning of the movie. It's It hasn't even been, like, a week since his grandfather died. What if they wished that Krillin was in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, no, I, I, I hear you. Like, they, maybe they could have done something. I, I mean, in the show, if Dragon Ball Z, like, Gohan wishes for... I only know this because of the bridge series... I think that Goku dies and Gohan wishes him back and it doesn't work just because Goku doesn't want to go back. I could be fucking getting that wrong entirely. That could be something that the abridged series said. Um, um they they do wish for some very silly stuff in the show. Mhm. Like uh, the, the the pig character wishes for like a perfect pair of underwear. <laughs> but uh. <laughs> You know, the show is kind of a comedy. Yeah, this, I feel like Dragon this Ball movie Z turned it more into an action show. Th- this movie feels like it and wants that's... to be like Dragon Ball Z, honestly. Yeah, yeah. That's that's another thing these two have in common. They're taking a more comedic show and making it less comedic. And... and you know, Goku does airbending and firebending oh, in yeah. the movie. Yeah, they talk about airbending a lot. It was just kind of interesting. It, it made the parrot make even more sense, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. Is is Dragon Ball really not, like, a show that's made for kids? I thought it was. I understand that there's, like, weird jokes in it, but that's just kind of a different culture kind of thing, I feel. I I don't know. I couldn't say. 
Mm. If, if it's an adult show, then I might just be way off. One thing this you know we were talking about Avatar being or Last Airbender being a more accurate adaptation, but one thing this movie gets right it pronounces all of the characters' names correctly. Yeah, yeah, they did get that right. They even, um, they, they even pronounce Kamehameha correctly, yeah. which some of the Dragon Ball dubs don't. It um. At the end, it felt like it was trying to be somewhat... You know what? So many of these fucking movies do it. Do this, where it's like, here's this iconic thing about the character, and we're going to throw it into the final scene, and only the final scene. Like, the fucking Super Mario Brothers yeah. movie do that with Mario and Luigi's costumes. This one's nitpicky, but in the Sonic movie, he doesn't get his fucking shoes until the very end of the movie. Um, you know, it's just like these major... Things it's always been a thing in these movies, uh, you know, like fucking, you know, the Sam Raimi Spider Man movie trilogy. You know, in the first movie, they it does take him a little while to get into the suit, but you get to see a lot of time with him in the suit. What's with so many of these movies thinking like, oh, they're gonna fucking applaud us when we show the them in the costume that they wear on the show? Why aren't you making them wear it throughout a good <laughs> chunk of the movie? Yeah, yeah. They like people want to see this in the movie. They don't want you to think. <laughs> They don't want you to throw it in at the very end. Fucking Lion King allowed Rafiki to have his staff in the climax of the film. (laughs) Fucking horrible piece of shit. Uh, Um, Is there anything else of Dragon Ball Evolution? One one thing I should mention, I do have a bit of a, a bias for this movie because in high school, my friends and I started doing bad movie nights. And the very first movie we watched at the very first bad movie night was Dragon Ball Evolution. No idea why this is the movie we decided to start with, but it was. And then right after it, we watched Super Mario Bros. movie. So it it was kind of funny to me that you were comparing the two. Although, yeah, I see the comparison. Dragon Ball Evolution is to Dragon Ball as Super Mario Bros. movie is to Mario. I will give Mario this, though. The movie came out when there was... It was still very difficult to adapt Mario into a movie. Um, yeah. I think Illuminations, when that comes out, I think it's going to be much closer to the source material, but it is not going to be as entertaining. Um, that is that is my theory on that, because the Super... I, on, I like the Super Mario Brothers movie and a lot of it. I mean, a ton of it's ironic enjoyment, but there's, you know, like Bob Hoskins fun to watch. There are some good sets yeah. like the costumes for Mario and Luigi are acceptable. You, I, it's just they should have been in them longer. Yeah. And I think another thing with Mario is like Mario was not super popular when they were making that movie, at least not with like adults. Mm-hmm. Right. There, there, there wasn't as big of an audience for that movie back then. I think there was probably a bigger audience for a Dragon Ball movie than there was for a Mario movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, bit, bit, yeah. Basically, all I'm getting at though is I think Mario has an excuse for not being like the games, whereas Dragon Ball yeah. Evolution has zero <laughs> excuse. Yeah, because <laughs> it's a show adaptation. Um, the everything is there. Yeah. Ooh. Um all right. Well, I guess we have to get to the vote on this one. I'm sure people have no idea where we, what we're going to vote for. It's going to oh, be a big no. shock. I'll be completely honest with you. Going in like the first two, I'm like these seem like fair matchups because I have no clue who is going to win. And I was honestly surprised Marmaduke won last time. <laughs> so yeah, I, I didn't see that coming until after we watch Marmaduke and I was like yeah I liked that more uh but this one I I'm like nope I know exactly which one of these I am picking I don't even have to rewatch them I know exactly which one wins it's Dragon Ball Evolution yeah it's easily Dragon Ball Evolution and I uh I was gonna give The Last Airbender the benefit of the doubt because I hadn't seen either of these movies but based on what everyone says it It was, like, I didn't even know this until, like, after you announced it. I didn't realize that there were people who called Dragon Ball Evolution so bad it's good. 
Um, but once I heard started hearing that, I've heard nothing but boring things about the last Airbender. I was like, yeah, it's probably going to be Evolution that wins. Yeah. Yep. Um, and the public is with us on this one. It's unanimous. Uh, although this was a much closer matchup than the other two with 71 votes. 70% of the vote goes to Dragon Ball Evolution, 30% goes to Last Airbender. So hmm. that's higher than Marmaduke's 11% or Catwoman's 17%. There I are could see a Dragon more Ball. people who picked Sorry, Last Airbender over Dragon Ball Evolution. I think I could kind of see it from the perspective of it being an adaptation. I'm going into it from the perspective of what's a more entertaining or interesting movie. It's easily it's easily Evolution. But in terms of which one's a better adaptation, it's it's easily The Last Airbender. It's just because it is adapting the material. It's just it does such a horrible job with it and it's boring. And there's Dragon Ball Evolution. I would definitely watch it like I would definitely watch it again with a fan of the show that wasn't aware of what the movie was, because that would be hilarious. Um, I would not watch The Last Airbender. With like a fan of the show that hasn't seen the movie. I'm never watching that yeah, there's, again. There's no reason to watch Last Airbender. Because it's just the worst version of something else. Yeah. Dragon Ball Evolution. It's a bad take. But it's at least a unique take. Yeah. It's, uh, it's I a, will, I, go ahead. I will say though on IMDb. Uh, Dragon Ball Evolution has the lower rating. Yeah, I, which is I, odd to me. I, I mean, I, I see it though because it's just like I can imagine a fan of Dragon Ball watching it, getting like ten minutes in, and then just being like, "Oh fuck this!" Giving it the lowest rating they could because it's just immediately. Yeah, dis- it's like it's a, it's like it's dismissing them. It's like it's a bigger insult to the fans of the show. I think that's where that comes from. Yeah, I I assume this is like Dragon Ball fans going, "Oh fuck this shit!" Yeah, because it has two and a half stars. Versus Avatar: The Last Airbender's four. Yeah, I, I'm I'm torn between a one and a two for Evolution because there's like an there's an entertainment value at least. Um, I but, gave it three, but I also gave Last Airbender a two. So yeah, I I, I couldn't give the even though they're like technically like yeah I said I liked the sets in The Last Airbender, but I think the parts that are bad outweigh it to where I'm not going to give it any like. It's still the, a the one. problem. The problem is I'm a masochist, and I've seen some very, very bad movies, so, like, you have to really get under my skin to get a one. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Dragon Ball Evolution wins. Hooray! Woo! Uh, alright, so next time, these, this one I said was gonna be painful, and I think it lived up to that. Although, you know, there was some fun with Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah. So next time I we're doing a fun one, I am predicting there are going to be people in the comments defending both of these movies. People saying these aren't bad movies. Uh, okay. They, they were they were pretty poorly received upon release, but they've both developed a bit of a cult following. It's uh, '90s comic book girls of the post-apocalypse. It's Pamela Anderson as Barb Wire versus mm. Lori Petty as Tank Girl. Yeah, okay. I've heard of both of these. Um I've never I have never seen I mean I, honest to god most of the stuff that you recommend. I think I I saw Garfield and I saw Batman and Robin at one point, I think. But most of these I'm assuming I've never seen. <laughs> um I I think I've seen Barb Wire, but it's been a long time. <laughs> um never seen tank girl wait no i've seen tank girl i haven't seen barbed wire i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> uh so that'll be the the matchup for next time sounds good uh in, until then for my co-host mackle i'm matt presents have a nice day peace out